Hi Libra, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your March 2022 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say. It's just, there you go. You can see that better. So let's see here. Libra. How will Libra be affected by the March 2022 full moon? Angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay. So we have the Queen of Wands. We have the Seven of Pentacles. And we have the Page of Pentacles, starting everything off. This is very interesting. It's like we're thinking, we're thinking, we're thinking about our careers, about the way that we want to move forward, about what we're passionate about. And it's it's almost like this is a time out. And it doesn't mean like we're put in time out type of thing. It means that this is a time where we're looking at what it is that we really enjoy, what it is that we really want. So we have this sense here with the seven of pentacles. It's like, okay, where do I want to be? How do I want to move forward? And this is a time where we might find ourselves doing some like retail therapy or, you know, going to our favorite ice cream place or just doing something that's indulgent and fun and, and beautiful for us. And that's going to be a really positive thing, a really good thing for us to do at this time. And then it moves us here to the page of pentacles. We become a student about where we want to move forward, about what's important to us, about, you know, where we want to be. But there is a sense of like, I need to just take myself out of the situation that I'm in right now. And it has to do with work. It has to do with our passions. It has to do with our careers and how we want to move forward in life. And spirit saying here, you know, this is a timeout time. This is a time to look at, okay, what's really important to me? What do I really desire? Where do I need to be? And people might say, oh no, but I need you now. I need you now type of thing. But even if we can just take off this day or, you know, on the, on the 18th of March, if we can take off the 18th of March or we can, you know, do something fun whenever we do have a day off, that's going to be really important to us during this time. But there's something here that we're looking at and there's something that like we're reevaluating, we're reevaluating. I'm just hearing, look again, look again. And if we're so busy, we won't be able to see what really needs to be seen. So do be, do be aware of that during this time. Now let's look at the energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. So here we have the seven of pentacles. It's interesting because we have the seven of pentacles right here, right? We have the sense of patience, look, you know, see, really take the things in. And then we're also being told don't take, don't take too much time because we're still needed. We're still an integral part of things. And so that's going to be very important for us during this time where it's a sense of be very mindful of, you know, not walking away from something that's really important where it's like, okay, you know what? I'm so fed up. I'm so done. I'm just, I'm just going to walk away. And spirit saying here, mm, no, take your time, but look at it. But, oh, okay. So that's interesting. Somebody's putting you on pause. Somebody's putting you on pause, putting you on pause, putting you on pause. And this isn't a person that is, so like when people put you on pause and like, let's say they had a new baby or let's say they, you know, have, have moved or something like that. This is a person who's putting you on pause just because they don't want to hear what you have to say. It's not because all of a sudden they've just lost track of time. This is a person who, and I see this more, it's at work, but it's also like somebody who's blurred the lines between work and, and friendship. Okay. And they're putting you off because 
they just don't want to be bothered with it right now. Or, you know, they became too close and now it's like, ooh, I'm pulling away. So be be mindful of that. They're going to say I put it on pause. It really means they just want it to kind of like sit in the corner and die. So so just be aware of that. Not us to to have harm come to us. But they don't want to be to be burdened with more problems because they don't know how to handle it. They just don't know how to handle it. Okay. And then let's look at the chakra energy for this time. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. This is soul's healing. This is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown. There's a sense of a beauty of healing of, of things coming together during this time, Libra, and, and balance really coming in. So that's going to be a very beautiful thing for us. It's like, oh, this is what I want. This is where I need to be. This is what's important to me. So let's go deeper into the tarot. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Okay. So we have the seven of wands, the king of wands. So we have this connection here that's really good for us with the king and the queen. We have the ten of water, the ten of cups, and the page of cups. Okay. So we have a soulmate connection, a true love connection coming through. It's not going to be realized during this time. It's kind of like ships in in the night like passing each other so there is something here where we're feeling the spark we're feeling this connection and it has a lot of, of passion to it it has a lot of the potential for passion now this could be a romance that's blooming but it also has to do with the way that we're working the way that we're going after something we could be meeting somebody who's going to be a great business ally for us or we could be meeting somebody who's just going to be a really great friend and really get where we are in our lives so that's going to be really important for us during this time there is a sense here mm -hmm. yeah there is a sense here of this person's going to as the heart is shown, right? This person is going to have their heart more out. And the king of, of wands during this time is going to be more like emotionally present. And we're going to be looking at things kind of off in the distance, all right? It's going to be like, well, I, I have to fi fix this. I have to fix this. And we just have to be aware of this. So this person is making themselves vulnerable. And this isn't something that they usually do. And again, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner. It can just be a friend. And or, you know, a business partner or whomever, they're making themselves emotionally vulnerable, which isn't something they do. So be aware of it. If they say, hey, let's, let's get coffee, we might not think that saying, oh, no, I'm busy is a big deal. And it might very well be a big deal to them. So just being present is going to be really important because there is something going on here. And I see this for like this person because we're, we're intertwined with them. I just see, yeah, like it's braided together. And I don't know. I don't know. I just see yeah, braids. Okay. Like, like one of those bracelets you would wear at school when it was like a friendship bracelet or something, but they're, they're braided together. And I don't know if that's like, and I see it, if it's more elegant, like a braided piece of, of gold jewelry or silver jewelry or something like that, or it's like a braided, it's like a braided friendship bra bracelet. And that has a specific meaning for somebody. I just don't know what it is right now. And it brings us to the seven of wands. There is something where it's like, I've been fighting for so long. I've been fighting for so long and I'm really tired of fighting. And so there's this person here who's not usually a, con a confider. Like they don't usually come to other people. They're going to be coming to us. So just be aware of this during this time where it's like, this is a person who who's saying, you know, I, I need you. And, and they don't usually ask for help or, or even want to connect. So just being aware of that, because we're going to see here that it's really important for us to have that connection. To, to make that connection coming forward. There's also something here where it's like, listen, stand your ground and stand it firm, but stop fighting, stop fighting. Because that's one of the reasons why we kind of feel burnt out, where it's like, I've been fighting for so long. I've been doing this for so long. I've been trying this for so long. And now I just need to stand in my confidence, stand in myself, say, I know what I'm doing. I know who I am. I know what I want and not let anybody push us around, but then also say, I'm not letting this eat my life anymore. It then brings us to the Ten of, of Cups. The Ten of Cups is they all live happily ever after. There's happiness, there's joy, there's contentment, there's beauty that's coming forward here. And the Page of Cups is us being a student of that heart, of that emotion. So what's really interesting, if we look at this time astrologically speaking, the Moon is going to be opposite Neptune and the Sun and the Moon are right next to each other. All right. So Neptune 
not the sun and the moon, the, the sun and Neptune are right next to each other, which makes Neptune's energy even stronger. Neptune is all about our dreams. It's all about what we desire to create within this world. Our, our dreams, our aspirations, our spiritual connection, you know, how we really want to move forward. And if we do not come to terms with what it is that makes us happy, with what it is that shines our heart, we're going to feel like chaos. It's just going to feel like chaos. So being mindful of that is going to be very important. The moon is also trying Pluto. Now this is important, especially if we're born on the cusp with Scorpio, or if we have a lot of Scorpio in our chart, because Pluto rules Scorpio. And this brings emotions to the forefront. It doesn't mean that they take over, which is something that we could think, oh, okay, my emotions are really intense. They're right here. They're going to take over. They're going to be the lead player. But no, it's going to be that we're emotionally very connected, very in tuned. We're seeing things and it can be very overwhelming for us. And that could be also something that we're fighting during this time where it's like, but I'm so connected and we could just need a time out, a time out from not only feeling our own emotions so intensely, but feeling everybody else's emotions so intensely as well. This is a time where we're learning. We have the page of pentacles. We have the page of cups. There is, there's something coming to us in the most uns unexpected way. It's leading us down a road that we hadn't thought we would be walking, or we didn't think we would be, you know, opening up this door. And now we're going to be like, oh, oh, that's interesting. Or, oh, I didn't see that. And now that we're starting to see it, it's like, oh, well, this puts things into perspective. During a full moon, opposite forces, opposite emotions, opposite energies really do come into play because the moon is opposite the sun. And so this is a time where the moon, which represents our sensitivity, our subconscious, how we interact with our, you know, surroundings without realizing it, you know, subconsciously, our childhood, the relationship that we have with our, our mother or the caregiver who raised us, that all comes into play during a full moon. And that's what the moon brings forward. The sun brings forward our personal identity, our independence, where and how we should really let ourselves shine and the way that we move forward in, in the waking world. So it's almost like the paternal, like, you know, quote unquote, stereotypical paternal pushing you out into the world, the maternal taking you in and, and nurturing you. That's the sun and the moon. And so here during this time, we have this fire, we have this passion shining. And it's like, how do I nurture this? And also, how do I nurture this person who's, who's, you know, I just see an olive branch coming out. It could be somebody we were fighting with before, but it's like, how do I nurture this person who needs to have peace entering into their lives, peace coming in with them. They could be a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This is a very passionate person. This is a very, you know, emotionally present person, but this is a person, again, who doesn't usually connect with everybody as easily as maybe they would want to, a little bit more reserved. So let's go deeper into this. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. We have the Six of Swords, the Four of Swords, and the Universe, which is the World card. It's very interesting. We're going to be led forward. It's like, okay, enough is enough. I'm taking what I need. I'm taking what I've gathered. And now I need to, to kind of move on from things. So we've had this pause. We've had this time of introspection. And we're going to be surprised by just kind of stepping back how it's given us a new way forward. And we're going to be thinking, oh, can I do this? You know, can I move forward this way? Is this right for me? Our angels are going to be guiding us. Spirit is saying here, don't make any really big decisions. Like, you know, this isn't a time where we're going to see absolutely everything change. This is going to be a time where key critical things start to change because we have the knowledge to bring it forward and we have the wherewithal to make it happen. So this is going to be powerful for us. This is going to be intense for us. It's going to be a game changer, but it's also going to be us saying, I know so much more now. I know so much more now and I'm letting spirit guide me. I'm letting myself be connected as much as it can feel overwhelming Libra to let ourselves be connected. This connection to our angels, to our spirit guides is going to be very beneficial during this time. The sense of like, listen to your inner voice, listen to, to how you're being guided because it is important. It brings us then to the four of swords. The four of swords is rest. It's contemplate. It's understand. It's also making sure that we're taking care of ourselves. Are we getting enough vitamin D so that our sleeps are good? Are we, you know, connecting with what we really want in our lives? Are we listening to our dreams? There is a sense 
even when we sleep, sometimes we can be so stressed that, you know, we wake up and we feel stiff. We just feel like, oh my gosh, I could sleep a million more years because I just don't feel rested. There's something in our subconscious that it's like knocking on the door, knocking on the door. And that's what I keep on seeing. It's just like, knock on the door, listen to me, knock on the door, will you let me in? And spirit is saying here, open up this door, open up, because we're going to be surprised what comes forward from our subconscious. So even when we go to sleep, if we just say, you know, I open myself to, to the messages of my dreams or yeah, something to that effect. And, and I remember them. That's going to be really important to us because the universe is opening. The world is opening in a very real way to us. And we can be like, wow, this is awesome. But we can also be very overwhelmed by it. It's like, okay, well, how do I move forward now? And where is it that I need to be? And what is it that's important? There's almost a sense of freedom that comes, but there's also a sense of, am I ready for this freedom? You know, so the world is opening and on one side, we're like super excited. And on the other side, we're thinking, mm, is this possible? And then there's just a question that comes with that. But there's also a sense of like, I've wished for this. I wanted this. I needed this. And so when the doors open, there's, there's a passion that comes forward because it brings us closer to our dreams. It brings us closer to what we desire. But also, it, it's terrifying. It can be like, oh my gosh, can I do this? So so just be be mindful of this, that there's a sense of the door is opening, but we can be so used to being overwhelmed and overburdened that we don't see it or we're just so tired. We're so like fed up that we're not seeing it. So it's going to be really important to have that time out, to have that pause, to have that way of connecting. It brings us then to angels and spirit guides shows clearly. Yeah, the Six of Swords, again, coming through. So that's going to be really important. The Ten of Wands. Oh, okay. The King of Wands. The King of... The Knight of Wands. And the Empress. Okay. So what's very interesting here is that, again, we have that repeat of the Six of Swords. We have that repeat of it's time to move forward. But again, I don't see this as a really big change. I see this as very subtle. It's more like I've stood up for myself. I stood my ground. And now I'm taking my knowledge and I'm having it work for me. And as we do this, okay, there is this real sense of I'm putting down the burdens that have, have just been too much, but I'm also going to find like what fits together, why I've gathered all this knowledge, why I've gathered all this information. It's not for nothing. And that's going to be very important here because we're carrying a lot and we can think, wow, I'm just like a workhorse or I just have more and more piled on all the time. And what Spirit's saying is if we stop, if we look at everything that we're doing, Right? And then we say, okay, you know what? This is ridiculous that I'm carrying this. I shouldn't be carrying it. You know, this is ridiculous about, like, you know, carrying this person. They should be doing their own work or, you know, kind of like, you know, they should be doing their laundry type of thing. I just hear it as, as little things that they need to be kind of picking up after themselves. They need to be taking care of things and not always putting it on you. And then there's the sense of, well, now I can see how the pieces come together. I can see why I've been carrying the fire word firewood instead of letting it just be outside and, and get all wet and not be covered and not everything be secured. So this is going to be a very important time for us because we're looking at things and we're saying, okay, I actually have all the pieces. It's like doing a puzzle. And I just see like, we've been trying to put the pieces together. We've been trying to put the pieces together. Now I have the pieces. Now they're going to start to fall together. It brings us then yeah, to the King of Wands. That King of Wands energy is coming forward very intensely here. Except here, it's that connection. It's that person who's saying, you know, I'm connecting with you heart to heart. This person here is a little bit different. So we can get these two confused. And I, I'm, yeah, we will. Because Spirit's saying we're going to try to connect with the one who is more determined, focused, and a little bit more aloof. And yet we're not going to be connecting with the one who we'll think is more aloof because they're just hurt and wounded and, and they need somebody to talk to. So just be mindful about this. We'll think that the one who needs help is the one who isn't, you know, who, who doesn't need help. And the one who does need help will think is the one who's perfectly fine. So just be aware of this during this time. And there is the sense here of our passion, our fire is ignited. You know, there's the sense of this is where I need to be. This is what I desire. This is what I want. And this is a very plain spoken, very determined, 
you know, says it exactly as they mean it sort of person. And it brings us with the Knight of Wands. And we have this energy here. And we're going to, it's, for some of us, we've seen this person evolve. We've seen them go from being the knight, from being the gatherer, the, the defender, the understander, to being the ruler. And they're transforming. And we very much connect with that transformation. For others of us, this is us saying, okay, listen, I know where it is that I want to be. I know the energy that I am calling in. Knights protect queens. And we have the queen of wands right here. And there's a strong sense of, is this what I've been waiting for? Have I been waiting for this determination, this focus, this insight, these ideas to guide me forward? Have I been waiting for somebody to, to be that knight, to be that defender? But also, have I been waiting for me to stand up for myself and say, this is where I need to be? It guides us then to the empress. And the empress is absolute prosperity, absolute success, bounty, beauty, wealth coming into play. It's pregnant with possibilities. It's having this tremendously creative energy at all at our fingertips, right there within us. And there's also the sense of this nurturing woman stepping forward. Now, this could be a woman or, you know, somebody who just has very feminine energy to them. Okay. It's very funny because they like perfume, right? And this could be, this definitely means somebody, something to someone where it's like, it's their scent that stays with you. Like you can smell them on you. It's not overpowering. It's not one of those people who just like bathes in perfume, but it's, it's very subtle. It's very beautiful. And it's that scent that says, oh, I'm safe. Now, I don't know if somebody is buying a perfume that was like their mom's or their grandma's or, you know, it's just somebody who was really lovely to them. And they, they found that scent and they're like, oh my gosh, I love this. And it makes me feel secure. And then we're knowing here that we have kind of like that matriarchal energy around us, protecting us, walking with us. That's going to be very important. But there's also a sense here of I'm stepping into my power. And as I step into my power, it's going to be a very feminine way that I step into my power. But it does not mean that I'm any less strong, that I'm any less determined. There's a creative, beautiful energy that comes. And we're going to find that an energy that inspires, there's a scent that comes with it. There, there It is. It's like, okay, so what are they saying? It's, it's like you'll smell roses or a honeysuckle or, or, or the sea or something to that effect. Something. Yeah. And, and then, and then we have the idea come forward. So just, just be aware, just be aware that the nose will guide you. And I, I know that's, that sounds odd, but it, it is going to be true. Okay. So let's look at what the moon has to say for herself during this time. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. So we have new beginnings, protection, and discernment. This one looks going forward to fear. Okay. move these up so that you can see them. Can you see them? Okay. And then we have angels and spirit guides. A new start is coming. Your commitment is being tested. A new romantic cycle begins. Work through your fears. I love how they play off each other beautifully because we start here. We start with the new moon. Here it is the new moon. Here it is the new moon. It's beginnings. And we have a new start is coming. So there are new beginnings that are coming here. That's why we kind of have to step back during this time and let ourselves be illuminated. Let the ideas be illuminated. Let us see things in a new way because then it brings us to... Your communication is being tested, but we are protected. So even though we might not be understanding the person correctly, and it's it's going to be this these two fire sign energies. Again, it's a person who's very passionate, but very emotional, like needs our connection. And then it's a person who's very fiery, very determined, and is much more aloof. So here, our communication is being tested. We are protected. We are guided. Things are, are falling into place that we didn't even realize. 
it brings us then to the new moon in Libra right here. And it says a new romantic cycle begins. That's important for us because we are Libra. And discernment. What do we want from this new romantic cycle? How do we want to move things forward? What's important to us? What isn't important to us? So the heart opens and the beauty comes. It brings us then to fear. It brings us to work through your fears, the new moon in Scorpio, and fear, feeling caged, feeling overwhelmed, doubting, you know, thinking about things and then not seeing them because we're getting too much in our own heads. And that's going to be something that's very important for us to acknowledge because there are these doors opening and there is this way forward. But we saw that with the world. It's like, put in my way, ready. Like, wait, 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 wait. I don't know if I'm ready for this. And Spirit's saying, you can take your time, but know that these opportunities, like a time like this, it comes around rarely. And so as we're connected, as we're understanding things, as we're seeing ourselves, as we're freeing ourselves, are we ready to take the leap of faith? Are we ready to really move ourselves forward? It moves us then to our subconscious Luna message, which is patience and believe in the impossible. Believe in the impossible, but we have to have patience because it won't just happen overnight as much as we want it to. It'll take time and there will be failures and hurts and disappointments and then beauty really coming forward. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of and this is the two of wands. We need to be mindful, again, of those doors opening, but the way that we're connecting with the doors opening, the way that we're seeing ourselves, where it is that we want to be, the idea that we have for our lives and the idea that other people have. So it moves us then to our subconscious chakra message, which is the crown chakra, and it's my absolute favorite card, the I am present. The I am, yeah, presence. How do I see myself? How do I desire myself within this life? How am I moving forward? What am I connecting with? Who am I connecting with? What is my presence in this world? What is this presence for me? Am I powerful or am I afraid? Am I confident or am I unsure? And we're going to look at it and we just have to be honest with ourselves because it's the energy that we're crowning ourselves with. It's the crown that we're putting on our heads. It's the power that's leading us and it moves us to our subconscious tarot message which begins with the hermit, Virgo energy, turning inward, looking, seeing, understanding. The stars guide us. Our dreams guide us. What are we being guided towards? And again, with the four of, of swords, are we connecting with our dreams? Are we connecting with our inner vision? Or is the world so overwhelming, so chaotic that we've lost sight of it? You know, because we're... The only way I can see it is like, you're trying to fit your, sh your feet into shoes that are too, too small. And it hurts. And you can do it. You can. But is it worth it? So it moves us then to the moon. The moon is going to illuminate a lot for us. It's very important for us during this time. That connection with the moon, the beauty of the moon, the serenity of the moon. This is Pisces energy. So our dreams come forward, it connects us with Neptune. Neptune comes forward quite strongly for us because Pisces is ruled by Neptune. But there is a question here. It's like, what is coming forward during this time? What is it that I deeply desire? You know, pull a tarot card, write an intention for that day and see what it means as the day goes on. Leave it on your desk, leave it on your nightstand. Because what we see at the beginning of the day on the 18th of March will be quite different than what we see at the end of the day. It brings us then to the fool. I need to take that leap of faith. I need to jump. I need to go after. Am I afraid? Am I overwhelmed? Is this right for me? These are the questions we're asking ourselves. But there's also this energy here of like, but I need to. It brings us then to the hermit once again. So subconsciously, we have the hermit coming up twice here, turning inward. It's going to be so important to listen to our inner voice, to what we deeply desire, and not let our will be, be demanded by everybody else. But we're also being told, don't turn too deeply inward, because we have a tendency to block out you know, the voice and, and the lessons of people 
that are really important and dear to us. Also, just looking at it, his face, as I was going to put it down, is a little bit, I don't know, disgusted here. And so it's almost like I'm holding out my dream and I'm disgusted with it. Or somebody looks at our dream and they're disgusted with it and they're thinking, how could you have made such a choice? Subconsciously, somebody's disapproval has had more of an impact on us than we realize. And that's going to be very important for us to come to the understanding of. All right. All right, Virgo. I, or, all right, Libra. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time and of ourselves. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Libra, and may you have a blessed moon. <laughs>